So again, God bless everybody. It's going to also go to the Facebook Live. Uh, let's see how this works this morning. Praise God, I see Wanda Luce coming in. Praise the Lord. It's setting up the meeting right now, so we're going to give that a minute. Mama G. So not quite sure did it go through. I can't see from my end. Yes, it did. It says live here. It's okay. dead. Okay, there we go. All right. Well, God bless everybody again this morning. Uh, we appreciate you. Uh, Wanda Lou, how you doing this morning? We're good to see you joining us. Doing well, thank you. Good morning, everyone. All right, at this time, again, uh, we are live, and, and so those who are on Facebook can join in with us today. Uh, uh, we, we appreciate you being able to be flexible uh, since the heating went out on, uh, yesterday, and uh, we appreciate uh, uh, everybody being with us right now. And so it, we're not going to prolong. Barbara Lou, I'm going to uh, highlight you if you could uh, share a scripture with us this morning. Um, that'll be a blessing. Okay, good morning, everyone. The scripture will be coming um, from the book of Psalms, Psalm 21, and it reads, The king shall joy in thy strength, O Lord, and in thy salvation, how greatly shall he rejoice. Thou hast given him his heart's desire and has not withholden the request of his lips. For thou prevented him with the blessings of goodness. Thou setteth a crown of pure gold on his head. He asked life of thee, and thou gavest it him, even length of days forever and ever. His glory is great in thy salvation. Honor and majesty hast thou laid upon him, for thou hast made him most blessed forever. Thou hast made him exceeding glad with thy countenance. For the king trusted in the Lord, and through the mercy of the Most High, he shall not be moved. And verse 13 says, Be thou exalted, Lord, in thine own strength. So will we sing and praise thy power. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. We're going to now have uh, uh, Pastor Tanya, if she would, uh, lead us in a word of prayer this morning. Good morning, saints. Let's honor God and bow our heads. Lord, our Father, we come before you, almighty God, and give you praise and thanks for just being such a faithful God, Lord. Lord, you are almighty, Lord. You are our protector, Lord. Lord, you are everything to us, or we're nothing without you, Lord. Lord, our Father, we come before you right now. Guide our footsteps, Lord, today, Lord in the way that you want us to do what you want us to do in your will, Lord, our Father. Strengthen our hearts right now. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, watch over us in our family, Lord, the church family and the mothers, Lord, our Father. We pray for those who are not well in their bodies, Lord. We know you are a healer, Lord. We know you are a deliverer, Lord, because you have proven it time and, and time again about it by our lives, in our lives, Lord, our Father. We just give you praise and thank you, Lord. We thank yeah. you for our leader, Lord. Lord, our Father, we thank you for all who is in covenant in partnership with us, Lord, our Father. Lord, we thank you for our members and our faithful members, Lord. You are holy, Lord. We thank you, God. Lord, our Father, we stand by the blood of Jesus, Lord, which rises us up, Lord, our Father, and has, defe has defeated all 
evil, Lord our Father. And we thank you for that, Lord our Father. Lord, we stand by the blood of Jesus, Lord, which is the evidence and the source of our faith, Lord our Father, and his victory, Lord our Father. Hallelujah. In you, Lord, in you, Lord, we, we find true protection, Lord. In you, Lord, you are you are a victory. You are a victorious. We are victorious. Lord, we give you praise, Lord. We say this in, in faith, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We appreciate that, uh, Pastor Tanya. I was uh, asked the uh, uh, ministers, do, do you have a, uh, do you hear anything in your spirit this morning? Amen. Before we go forth, if God's shared anything with you to encourage the body with this morning. Uh, if not, then I will go ahead and we're going to, we're going to go ahead and, and we'll go ahead and get into the word then uh, this morning. Uh, and uh, I want to continue from last week, the word of the Lord that came to us about spiritual elevation. And, uh, and so when we, when we consider it, I want to review it and I want to go take that just a little further. Uh, if you would turn your Bibles to Revelations chapter four. Revelations chapter four, amen. And, and so uh, I want to just review briefly, and then I'm gonna build upon what God spoke to us. And we spoke about something similar to this uh, back uh, a month or two ago, as it pertained to what Abraham saw. And so in Revelation chapter four, uh, I'll begin reading from verse one. And so, and it says, based upon what John saw, he says, verse one, after this, I looked, he said, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, come up hither and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And he said in verse two, and immediately I was in the spirit and behold, a throne was set in heaven and one sat on the throne. And the characteristics that he described, if you finish reading that, was not the human characteristics that we, we, that we now understand. And so and I want to read this in the Amplified Version of the Bible. He says, after this, I looked and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I had heard addressing me, like the calling of a war trumpet said, come up here and I will show you what must take place in the future. At once I came under the Holy Spirit's power and behold, a throne stood in heaven with one seated on the throne. Glory be to God. And, and, and it's a blessing to me that John said, and, and, and I shared this in Revelation 1, John, the Bible says, he, he said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. But even being in the spirit, God called him higher for what he needed to see. And so this is, this. there, there were some major principles here and I just outlined it and then I want to read something in your hearing that first of all, there's always room for growth in God. Don't be content in saying I have arrived and I've got it all and there's nothing else for me to achieve as a believer. Uh, that that's so that, that can't be even farther from the truth. We have so much more to gain as we continue our commitment to God and how we how we pursue Him. And so, secondly, the Lord is the only one that can reveal to us what it is He sees and what it is He's hearing, what it is He wants to communicate. Hear me now, I thank God for books and all of these things that we have to glean on that men and women have written over time, the, the great authors of our time. But the Lord 
is the only one that can call us up to be able to communicate to us what it is he wants us to know. And so if, if my relationship with God is strained or, or if I'm somehow uh, misguided or distracted, I cannot hear and therefore I won't be able to come up and see what it is he's trying to communicate. Let me read this in your, in your hearing this morning. For those that are on Zoom and those that are joining us live, listen to this. The advantage of elevation allows a broader range of vision. Let me say that again. The advantage of elevation allows a broader range of vision, a better view, and a different insight. Once our minds are elevated, seeing and knowing God takes on a brand new meaning. Think about that. It allows a broader range of vision, a better view, and different insight. Oh my God, that'll preach all by itself. That it is is so many ramifications there that once you and I are so committed to the Lord to where these things happen to where we just start being elevated in God. Our vision changes. Oh, hallelujah. Our insight changes. Our view changes. And once those things start happening, our behavior will change and come in alignment with what we now see. Y'all remember I shared last week with you that, that Elisha with his servant, Elisha saw one thing, and he, he behaved a, one way. His servant saw another thing and behaved a different way. But once he was elevated in his vision, when his vision was expanded, guess what happened to his behavior? His behavior lined up with Elisha. Glory be to God. Mm, boy, that'll preach right there. When you and I align with God, our behavior then will change. It's changing based upon what we now see. And you know, listen, I've been in this thing since 1982, and every single day is brand new. Glory to God. Every single day is brand new. And it's something that God reveals to me differently every time I go to the Word of God, every time I decide that I'm going to carve out me a quiet place and time to just meditate upon the word and to hear what he's speaking to me. And all of these things help us to be elevated. Our vision changes, our insight changes. Oh, hallelujah. And when those things change, our behavior will change. Just like Gehazi, we will go from this panic mode not knowing whether we're going to make it or not to where we have an assurance now in our spirit, in our heart, that this ain't no problem. No matter, no matter how, how insurmountable it seems, we be like Gehazi, we line up with how Elisha acted, and Elisha said, hey, this is no problem. Why? Because I know that there are more with us than it is with them. Hallelujah. And I say to you, house of God, there be more with you right now. There be more with you than it is with them. Who, who is the them? Any situation, any problem, any people that have come against you or making your way hard, there is more with you. And that's the vision that you have to grasp, that you have to catch to be able to see as God sees. This is why God could come to you this morning and say, fear not. You know, the Lord, he simply said, why are you so afraid? The Lord is on our side. We just need to see what he sees. But listen to me, beloved, and hear me clearly. 
it will not just happen. Your actions to make this happen must be deliberate. Your time, your study, your meditation of him. All of these things are deliberate actions that must be taken if we're going to have our vision elevated. To begin, to, you know, y'all hear what I'm saying? To be able to hear and see from the level God is looking at. When you can see from God's perspective, my God, you can sit there and truly, as Hebrews 4 says, enter into a rest and not be panicked. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Once we, our minds are elevated, seeing and knowing God takes on a new meaning altogether. Hallelujah. And so I want to launch from there. For a long time, we've had this ground level view. We're going to elevate. We're going to continue to elevate and go up. Amen. And we're not, we're not going to do it where one gets it and nobody else. No, we're going up together in the Lord. Amen. As, as we stay connected, we're going to go up together. See, God is not interested in just bringing the, bringing the leader up. No, God wants the whole house to come up because he wants to show his glory to this world so the world can believe and know that he is the only true God that's in the earth. Amen. And so I want to remind you of, and I want to go to Genesis 15 this morning, and then I want to come back to Jeremiah if I have time. Genesis chapter 15, and, and you've heard me speak on this, but it is relevant to what we're talking about now of being spiritually elevated, having an elevated vision. Amen. Glory be to God. Genesis 15, verse 5. And, and, and y'all know this, and you've, you've heard this before, but I, it takes on a different meaning when you connect it to the principle of spiritual elevation, of uh, expanding the vision. Y'all remember me saying this about Abraham. Listen to verse 5. Hallelujah. Well, let me read verse four. It, it, it holds so much truth in that. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, talking about Abraham, saying, this shall not be thine heir. Eleazar, your servant, will not be your heir. But he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. That listen now, hear me. Y'all, here's the principle here. Did you catch this? Abraham was just told what God already saw. What did God see? God saw Isaac. Oh Lord, have mercy. He says, He said, Listen now, let me read that again in here. He says, This is not going to be your heir. Eleazar, your servant, is not going to be your heir but the one that shall come forth. What is God communicating to him? I see something entirely different, Abram. I see the one that my blessing is on, even though he's not even yet a thought in your mind. I see him. Glory be to God. Don't you want to see what God sees about you? Hallelujah. I know I do. This is why I'm driven to, to, to pursue him this is what I'm committing every single, every single day is different for me. Just because I did something yesterday doesn't mean that I can't do it today and do more than that. Why? Because if I'm drawn to him, he always leads me in the path that he's chosen for me. Amen. So he tells Abram, while Abram said, I have no heir. So let's make my servant the heir. God said, no, no, you have to know what I know. And I know that there's one coming forth from you. Even though in your mind and body, you say, it's past the time. We're too old. There's no way I can have a child now. God said, but that's not what I see. Amen. 
I want to see what God sees about me. Glory to God. Now listen to this, beloved. And he says, verse 5, and he brought him forth abroad. What did God just do? Abraham was communicating to God within the tent. So God had to take and remove him from where he was so he could have an expanded vision or an elevated vision. Lord, bring me out my tent, out of my, out of my uh, uh, I guess, realm that's so restricted. It bring me out to where I see that expanded view from your level concerning me. I'm not trying to uh, 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 push this on anyone else. I need to see what you see about me. I may not have, like Abram, I may not even have physically what God sees right now, but what matters is if I can hear what he hears and see what he sees about me, now I can align myself up and now make sure my behavior does not contradict what God has purpose for me. Are you listening to me? Make sure your behavior does not contradict what God sees about you. And the only way to do that is to draw close to him. Draw close to God. So that he can say, no, that's not what I have for you. This is what I have for you. Amen. Listen to this now. He says, look now toward heaven and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, so shall thy seed be. Now listen to this, beloved. Please capture this in your thinking. Verse 6. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. What does this mean? Abraham says, Lord, I will trade what I thought about me for now what you think about me. Hallelujah. My God, Lord, I had a limited vision, but you, you, you took me abroad and showed me something much greater that you had for me, and I believe I will take what you have for me. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Aren't you glad that whereas you got that Volkswagen mentality, Tanya said something to me, Pastor Tanya said something to me, we were thinking about something. I, I can't remember what it was. And Tanya said something to me that was so profound. She says, you got to stop. We got to stop thinking like peasants. You think about that. We are, we, we are God's children. We have to stop thinking like peasants. And I say, my God, that thing shook me in my soul. I said, my God, how profound. Y'all, you know, that woman don't say too much when she speak. When she thinks she got a hold of something, boy, she comes out of there strong. She says, we can't think like peasants when we're supposed to be God's children. What? If, that's an elevated vision. Mm -mm. Glory be to God. Saints of God, if we were in the house today, in the house of God, I'd be dancing me a jig back right now. Uh, look, I might call staff and say, come on, dance with me, staff. Let's, let's celebrate. Let's glorify God. Hallelujah. We think so much like peasants. Abraham said, I just want, listen now, he said, I just want one heir. Just give me Eleazar. God said, no, come out from your tent. Look at the stars. That's what I see. Hallelujah. You, you and I might see, well, one, one this or one that or, or this child or that friend. And God said, no, come out, come out, to take, come up, come up hither. Let me show you what I see. And what God reveals to us is more real because he's the author of it. Are you listening to me? He is the author of all that he has purpose for us. But are we willing to take the time, like Abram, and come out. Abram could have stayed in the tent, but he came out. And guess what? When he, what that's what happened when he came out. He saw what God was communicating, and he said, I think I'll take the life you have for me. 
instead of the one I had planned for myself. Hallelujah. Lord, help us to take the life that you have planned for us and not the one we have planned for ourselves. Because the life he has planned for us is so much more greater, so much more, listen, peaceful and victorious. How many can identify with that? Say, Lord, Lord, let me take the life you have planned for me. Help me to see it like Abram, and then let me seize the life that you have for me, that you see. Glory be to God. Saints, I'm telling you right now, mm, 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 mm. hallelujah. Let me go on because I don't want to be, hold you too long today, but I tell you, I got one more page to go through today. One, I got a few notes here. But listen to this now. Now, based upon what I just said about Abram, go with me to Jeremiah chapter 1. Based upon how God elevated his vision, Abraham said, I'll take that life. How long will you and I stumble over the life that God's trying to present to us? Amen. How long are we going to, like Brother Jeff Tang, kick the can down the road? How long are we going to stumble on this thing? <laughs> Choose the life that he has for you. And I say that to all of you here, all of those that will listen to this message at a later time, God's life for you is far greater than what you can see. You just need to commit to him to come up so he can reveal it to you. Listen to what Jeremiah said. In verse five, it's a familiar passage, but I'm lining it up now with spiritual elevation. He says, in verse 5, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. This, listen now, God said, this is my, my vision of you. I have set you apart for the nations. And you, when you read this, and I'm going to read that in the Amplified Version before I go any further. My goodness, this is so powerful when you think about the vision and the expectation God had for him. Well, this is what he had for himself. And then he says in the Amplified, before I form you in the womb, I knew. Listen to this now. This shook my spirit yesterday. And approved you. Approved of you as my chosen instrument. Listen, why can God say, I have approved of you? Because God says, what I have set out for you is perfect. And I have approved of you for this particular function or activity. He's approved it because there's no flaw in his vision for you. Let me say that again. He's approved it because there's no flaw in the vision he has for you. The vision I have for myself is flawed. Lord, help me communicate this. The vision I have for myself has been flawed for years, making wrong decisions one after another. But, oh, he brought me back in alignment. And so he's letting me know like he told Jeremiah, I have approved of you. Why? The vision I have for you is perfect without error, without flaw. Why wouldn't I want to line myself up with what he sees about me? Listen to this. He says, before you, and then he says, and before you were born, I separated and set you apart, consecrating you. Mm. And I appointed you as a prophet to the nation. Jeremiah's vision was limited. Now God comes along and says, no, son, I set you apart for before you were born. What is he doing? He's elevating Jeremiah's vision of himself. Hallelujah. When you think about that, when all the, all, everyone was captive and, and all of these things going on, hear God telling him, I set you apart for the nation. That's the vision I have for you. Listen to this now. Hallelujah. 
I'm going to go down to verse 10 of Jeremiah 1. He says, see, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, hallelujah, to build and to plant. Beloved, this is powerful. He said, I have set you over the nations. I haven't set you above one small county. I've set you above the nations. That was it's so much. We, we Hear me now, beloved. We are supposed to begin in our locality, in our community. But God says, that is not where I have limited you. I have set you above nations. His vision is so much broader. But you and I, hear me now, it won't make sense if you and I don't draw close to God. What he sees won't make sense to us because the carnal mind can never comprehend the things of the spirit. You remember what Nicodemus did when he came by night and he said, Lord, he said, uh, he said I, I need to know about what all these things you're talking about. And Jesus said, Nicodemus, they'll, they'll never be understood as long as you're in the flesh. No flesh can understand it. I'm paraphrasing. He said, no flesh can understand this. You must be born again of the spirit to be able to see and understand what I'm telling you now. And so you know what his next response was? How can I enter into the, my mother's womb the second time? That's how we think in the natural. But Jesus elevated him, said, no, I'm talking about being born again from above, from the spirit to be able to see what I see right now. And, and, and I tell you, my beloved of the Lord, you are precious in the eyes of God. When God say elevate and come up, doesn't mean that you have not been doing all right. But if we're going to grow, if we're going to expand, We've got to come higher in the Lord. We, we, cannot, we cannot be content with saying, okay, I'm to a point now to where I'm showing up every week. Well, let's go beyond that now. Let's go beyond that. Let's draw even more closer to God and say, how much more can I offer? How much more can I commit so that I can see the plan God has for me? Because I'm telling you now, beloved, that's what I want for me now. I just want the life he has outlined for me because his has been approved. Mine has not been approved. He said, I, he told Jeremiah, I approve of you for this purpose. That's what I want. But it's very costly. And we have to be willing to pay the price. The quote, Mama Sheba, you got to pay the cost to be the boss. Amen. And, and so what will you do with this? On one hand, you have your own approved plan. On the other hand, you have God's plan without fault. My goodness, without error. What will you choose? Will you continue to go on your way? Or will you allow him to elevate you in the spirit to this flawless plan that he has for you? I, like Abraham, I believe I choose his. I know it's a cost to it. But I want to live my life, the rest of my life, uh, in whether it be 100 years from now, what, what time he's allotted for us. We want to be able to live this life to the fullest in his plan so that he can be glorified. Hear me, beloved. God will never get glory out of your plan. He gets glory out of his. Think about that. 
Because any plan that you and I have is just like uh, 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 Aaron's sons. They had a plan. They, they initiated fire and offered it to God. And God said, I don't want anything initiated by man. I, uh, God himself initiated the fire on the altar. And he says, draw fire from the altar when you light the incense. No, they're going to go and start their own fire. And the Bible says God called it strange fire. Why? Because he didn't initiate it. Mmm. Mmm, that's rich. I, God said, I only want what I initiated, which means the only plan I want for you is the one I initiated, not the one you planned out for yourself. And, and listen, I try to bring this in, Lord have mercy. I shared this, I think, last week or the week before last. And I want to make sure I communicate it the way I had written it down. Mr. Cambridge, y'all remember that name? Mr. Cambridge, wealthy, rich, had everything he had in the natural. But yet, he goes out to try to kill himself. Because his plan for his life still left him empty. He goes to try to kill himself, and he's got, he's got money like you wouldn't believe. He's got a powerful business, wealthy friends, uh, a nice family, but he's out trying to kill himself because his plan left him flawed and empty. He goes out to try to kill himself. This young man named Winston sees him, didn't know who it was at first, but when he swam out to get him, Mr. Cambridge said, leave me alone, let me die. This young man couldn't understand it. He, he goes out and he brings him back to shore. And when he brings him back to shore, he realized it's Mr. Cambridge, a man that he has looked up and admired his whole life for how successful he had been. And he said, Winston said, Mr. Cambridge, why would you want to end your life? And this, this thing would always resonate with me. He said, everyone knows what I am, but I still don't know why I am. And God, based upon Jeremiah 1 and 5, he is the only one that can give us the answer to the why. Think about that. Think about how powerful that is. You and I may have been groomed by our parents to do certain things in life, but God is the only one that can answer the question as to the why you and I exist. And I want to know the question to the why. What, what Mr. Cambridge did not have, listen, and I, and I wrote this down. Mr. Cambridge was searching for the why of his existence, but he was searching in all the wrong places, which ultimately brought him frustration and a desire to end his life. Mr. Cambridge needed someone in his life to tell him of the one who created him, to search him out before he formed him, the one that formed him in his mother's womb. He had no one in his life to tell him of the one that created him. Because out of all the money he had, out of all the status he had, out of all the power, prestige he had, he never had the answer to the why. And beloved, I don't want that to be us. I want us to have the answer to the why. Because we could go our whole life being successful in business, on a certain job, and never ever take it on God's plan for our life. And the only plan, hear me, love, never forget, the only plan that will bring God glory is the one that he initiated for us. The one he's laid out for us. And the only way to know that is for God to make it known to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so I'm going to close with Exodus 
33. Thank you, Jesus. Exodus 33, verse 12. And it says this. And Moses said unto the Lord, See, thou said unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, listen to this, beloved, I know thee by name. Glory be to God. Why does God communicate to Moses here? I'm not concerned about who I send with you. I know you by name. I know what I placed in you. He says, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Now, therefore, I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, hear me now, Moses was wise enough. He says, show me now thy way that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. And he said, my presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. Hallelujah. Only when we're in alignment with God's plan, when we, like Moses, say, Lord, show me your way. Show me your plan for me. God said, I know you by name. You found grace in my sight. I will go with you and give you rest. That means there's peace. I'm on, I'm on a path without flaw, without error. Let us seek God in such a way and commit to it so that we can have the answer to the why of our existence. All of us in our own right have been successful in this life, but it does not mean that it is God's why for us. And that's what we need. We need to make sure we know the why to why God sent us forth into the earth. Amen. So I just thank God for you today, beloved, and I, I pray that you will you would. Do those things that are necessary where God can bring you higher, where God can grow you to where he can send you out into this world to, uh, to fulfill his plan and purpose. And uh, while you're doing his plan and purpose, communicating the truth of Jesus Christ to people like Mr. Cambridge, there are so many people in our circle like Mr. Cambridge who are successful and we think that they, they don't need any need to know anything about Jesus, but you would be wrong. They need to know the answer to the why. All of the success they have will not fill that void. But you and I have been sent forth to the nations to tell them of the one who created them, who has the answer to the why. Hallelujah. We give God glory for that today. And I pray that you are able to receive what I'm trying to communicate to you today. I pray that you would go back, meditate upon this, and allow God to make it real to you in a way you can then act on it and change, that your behavior will change and that the outcome of your life will change in him. Amen. And so we thank God. Those of you that joined us on Facebook, please Share with us how this message has been a blessing to you as well. Praise God. And we thank God for that today. Hallelujah. He's good. And his mercy endures forever. So I'm going to stop the live stream now. And I'm going to stop the recording. And I just say the peace of God be with you all.